Hey, what's up guys? This is John from AdSense Flippers. And today we're going to go over how to get your site set up uh, and on your hosting account. So this tutorial is going to go over GoDaddy. Now, we used to host all of our sites on GoDaddy, but we've since switched over to HostGator. However, we still register our domains with GoDaddy. Uh, that makes the transferring process after we flipped a site or sold a site a little bit easier. But uh, we'll do a separate tutorial on HostGator. So let's get going. All right, the first thing that we need to do is we need to register our domain. So we'll go to GoDaddy. Uh, we're going to assume for this tutorial that you've already registered your domain. So you've typed in my domain here.com. Okay, you've clicked the go button and you've gone through that whole process. You, you now own the domain. Okay. Secondly, we're also going to assume that you already have a hosting account with GoDaddy. Okay. If you don't, you need to get one. If you, we'll put a link in this guide so you can just click through and, and check that out. Or you can also go to godaddy.com backslash hosting backslash web dash hosting. And these are shared plans. So I would recommend one of these two here, the deluxe or the unlimited, as those will allow you, you know, lots of space for multiple websites on one single hosting account, a bunch of email addresses if you need them and probably the ultimate would be your best deal if you're going to build a lot of websites because you can put unlimited databases on there which ultimately means unlimited WordPress installs so that is that okay so now we're assuming that you've got your domain registered and your hosting account set up the next thing you need to do is you need to add your domain to that hosting account so you have to connect the two so let's log into GoDaddy All right. We're going to go over here to my account. And we're going to scroll down a little bit here. And we're going to go to web hosting. And then launch. Okay, this is called your hosting control manager or your hosting control center. So this is where you're going to go to make changes to your hosting account, add domains, take domains away, build databases. Uh, do installs, file transfers, all that stuff. So what we need to do now is add the domain we just bought to our hosting account so we can set up our site. We're going to go over here to domains. As you can see I've got two domains in here right now and we're going to add one more. So we'll go up to add domain. Alright, this little box will pop up and once you start typing in your domain it should come up automatically and you'll be able to select it. So. I'll just grab this one here folder okay so when you first purchase and set up your hosting account the main domain that you connect to it will be installed to the root directory which means that there won't be a subfolder that it's installed into however when you add domains after the fact okay which is what you're gonna do as you build sites is you're gonna keep adding domains you have to install those in separate subfolders to keep them organized so it's it's probably important that you name those subfolders something you're going to recognize because you're going to go and upload files to them later you're going to do file, you know transfers on them all kinds of stuff so we recommend you just call the subfolder the same name of the domain so that there's less confusion so let's say our domain is redtables.com we're going to call this red tables and we'll hit okay all right so our domain has been added and now it's just pending setup. Now this can take 20 minutes, it can take up to even a day sometimes. Usually it's more, you know, around like an hour or so. So if you just wait a little bit, your domain will get set up and then you can move forward uh, and uh, get your site set up. In the meantime though, we're going to build a database on our server so that we can link WordPress to it and get everything running. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go back to the Home tab. And we're going to scroll down to database and then we're going to go to setup. Okay, we're going to add a description in here red table data. This isn't actually the name of your database, it's just a description so you can more easily differentiate between all your different databases. This is going to be the name, we'll call it red table. Three. Let's do a pass 
password. Make sure you write this information down because you're going to need it later when you do your site setup. You'll be able to find your database information and the name of it in the description, but you'll probably want to write down your password at this point. Okay, we're all set up here and we're going to click OK. All right, now this says pending setup. Usually this only takes a couple minutes and then our database will be set up. Okay, our database is all set up now. So we're going to go ahead and click on this little pencil icon here and make sure we write down all the information within this document so we don't lose it. That'll make our site set up a little bit easier later on. So what I do is just copy all of this and paste it into a notepad file. All right. So now we're going to go back to our domains and see if our domains have been added yet. And looking in here, yep, our domain is set up and it's in the subfolder that we designated. So now we can go ahead and upload our WordPress files. We like to use FileZilla because it's free, first of all, and it's really simple and really efficient. It's a great FTP client. Now you can upload files to your web server manually, but if you're building a lot of sites every week and every month, in some case hundreds, it really doesn't make sense to be doing it all manually. It's much more, it's much easier to do with an FTP client. So if you go to FileZilla-Project.org, you can go ahead and download that. And remember, you want the FileZilla client here, you don't want the server. Secondly, you'll need to go to WordPress.org backslash download and download the basic WordPress files that we're going to upload. Along with this guide, we've included our customized WordPress zip file, which already has all the plugins and things installed. We recommend you use that because it will save you a lot of time on site setup. So instead of installing WordPress and then going through installing each plugin individually, it'll be all right there for you. You just have to activate them and in some cases update them. All right, that's the end of part one. In the next tutorial, we'll show you how to get your WordPress files uploaded to your server, how to unzip them, and actually get WordPress installed.